Uh, according to Judicial Watch, the Justice Department this week will be releasing notes from a dozen FBI interviews with Justice Department official Bruce Orr, or the DOJ's uh, uh, official who met numerous times with discredited dossier author Christopher Steele, including after the FBI had fired him after improper leaks to the media. Judicial Watch has been fighting for release of the so-called 302s uh, interview notes since September of last year. Uh, joining us now, Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. Tom, it is great to have you with us. Uh, uh, I, I want to turn to the idea that we're going to see some of these documents. I know that you've uh, uh, been apprised that that will be the case. Why, why, do we, uh, why do we believe it? Well, because we sued for them and they promised the court, the Justice Department and FBI promised the court they'd be released. Uh, they were supposed to be released today, but they sought a few more Wait days. Wait a minute, they didn't lie to the court, did they? That well, was our basis know, for believing Thursday, <laughs> wasn't it? Well, their, their, uh, their promise was broken today in the interest of ah. further transparency, they tell us. And, I'm, and they, I am th told reliably that it's not the first time they've ever broken a promise to Judicial Watch. Well, that's true. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, they've been withholding these 302s uh, in full. And I think thanks in large measure to the president's transparency initiative, uh, they've rethought that. They have a new attorney general there at the Justice Department. So we will be getting these 302s that Congress has sought for a long time, but unable to get. Do you have and a frankly, sense of what it's, Do you have a sense of what it's going to reveal? What they're going to reveal? I, I think you summarized it nicely. Remember, Christopher Steele was paid by the FBI during the 2016 campaign, along with Clinton and the DNC also paying him. So it was a, a joint uh, operation yeah. against Trump. They had to cut him off because of his leaks. And rather than cut him off, they thought of a way to get uh, information from him still by using this cutout, Bruce Orr, whose wife worked with Christopher Steele, Nellie Orr. And so they were using him, yeah. Bruce Orr, to launder information from so, the Clinton DNC spy, Christopher Steele, to target Trump. This it, is at the beginning of the Trump my administration. My, my, my head hurts. We have, we've, we've gone over these, these realities for so long. And to find document documentary evidence and now is critically important as you've done uh, and, and congratulations I, I, I also you, you've also got documents that Comey Comey had FBI documents in his possession really well, well the or, the original sin of the Mueller operation was his appointment as a result of leaks of memos that Comey wrote about conversations he allegedly had with Which President is, Trump. Which is, to me, I think, and to most people, one of the most bizarre things, a solipsistic exercise, sending yourself a memo about what you say transpired in a, uh, a conversation that involved one other person. And as soon as he wrote those memos, in my view, they were classified. Certainly some of them were literally classified, and he shouldn't have taken them out of the FBI. Yeah. These were Trump's FBI files. He kept them at his home. We uncovered the documents. The FBI agents went over to his home a month after the fact to question him, and he show, and he gives them even more memos that he was keeping copies of at his home. Uh, really um, shows you that uh, this man was willing to break any rule in the book to target Trump, and it helps explain his motives and uh, in terms of the illegal spying the FBI committed against then-candidate Trump. So we're told, though, that Attorney General Barr is not going to prosecute, uh, that uh, this is uh, skinny stuff, uh, I guess, is, uh, is perhaps not the legal expression for it. But, uh, I, I mean, is Comey going to get another pass here? Are, are Brennan uh, and Clapper, by the way, Clapper was clapping, if you uh, will, uh, as soon as he found out Comey was not being prosecuted, are, are those three... Uh, Desperados, uh, are they really going to get off after what they did to the president of the United States and the American people? Well, Comey admits to leaking documents he shouldn't have leaked. Uh, I don't understand why they let him off there, and it doesn't augur well that more complex uh, prosecutions will occur. Uh, I, I, I don't understand what the attorney general's thinking is here. Uh, well, he took all FBI, hell will break loose, you know, in, in my criminal, opinion. But. Criminal victimization of, of President Trump led to the creation of the Mueller investigation. This was, I'll say, one of the core issues behind the Mueller corruption and Comey's no, abuse no, of you're, power. You're, you're preaching, I, I don't you're understand preaching to the choir here, Tom. I, I think every one it, of these people should be prosecuted. They're given their day in court. Uh, we'll presume they're innocent. 
But by God, we ought to find out if they're guilty. And if so, there should be consequences. Don't you agree? I agree. And the IG report presumably will be released soon. There you have this <laughs> unprecedented, re unprecedented referral by the IG reportedly right. for criminal prosecution of the former FBI director. The DOJ takes a pass. That's disheartening, to put it charitably. Um, and uh, I think we'll leave it with your charitable characterization of it uh, rather than my own. Tom, thanks so much. Tom Fitton, Judicial Thank Watch. You.